we're going to walk you through the installation of the JNL oil separator for your 2.0 EcoBoost, including the JNL kit. It's an oil separator, mounting bracket, two hoses, mounting screws and bolt. The tools you're going to need for installation is a 10 millimeter socket, 8 millimeter socket, extension, ratchet, a torque wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, a clip puller tool, grease or oil, and a heat gun. Also, you can use a lighter if you don't have a heat gun. This installation is rather involved. We do recommend professional installation. If you are looking to tackle this yourself, please assess your mechanical ability honestly. Watch this entire video before you start, as there is a lot of things to pull apart on this vehicle to get this kit installed. Let's get started. At the vehicle, we have a bunch of stuff to disconnect before we pull off this manifold. I'm going to start with these breather lines, the one with the yellow connection, you actually pull the tab out, and then there's something that looks like a thumbnail that you press in. Once that's out, and that will release, the smaller lines got button on each side. You push those, and then here's that other connection with that release. So you release that, pull that out, and then press that to release it. And then we're going to actually, where these EVAP lines are, there's pins. Take our clip tool and pry those out. And then this connection here, you can see this little tab, you just kind of wiggle past it. It's like a, almost in foam, and that pulls right off. Our wiring harness here. Same thing, get our clip tool behind it and pull that out. There's a few of those on this. Like that. We have these harnesses here. Again, use your clip tool. that out you're gonna need to disconnect these sensors there should be two of them on the white one you pull the white tab towards the passenger size fender and then you're gonna squeeze it to unplug the fitting or unplug the connection like that so this is that tab I pulled out And then this red one, you see that, you push the red tab out, and you squeeze, and unplug that, like that, okay. More than likely, there's going to be a matching connection like that on the other side. Just what I know from previous year, two liters. And we're going to need to actually disconnect. I'm going to pull this connection off. Because that's connected to the manifold. We basically just want to take off anything that's going to keep the manifold on the vehicle. We have this coolant pipe, which looks like it's just secured on a couple clips here. We're gonna take it off of that. These clips look like they just bite into the plastic. that so we can get that one off and there's another one on this side just try to be gentle with this stuff this is a very new vehicle so nothing should be too brittle like dealing with something that's older 
here. So there is a clip that is holding a wire, hiding the threads. Pop that off. So then we're gonna remove this stud. It's eight millimeters. There's another line here going off of this tree of hoses. It's a green connection. These connections, there's two ears that poke through. You actually have to lift up on the ears and push it back towards the connector. Basically, I'll show you how this is connected down there. So it's pushed in. like that so what you do is you lift up on these ears and push it out and it pulls right off so we need to get that out of the way all right and then over on the driver's side this big connection here there's small little white tabs in the back that are angled, you actually have to squeeze them. There's one on each side. Try to show you that now. You'll hear it click. Push that out and then pull that off. Every connection on this vehicle disconnects a little differently. So you just gotta pay attention. Don't force anything. If you're removing them the correct way, they come off very easy. So it looks like we have another electrical connection down here. And also another wiring harness fastened. So I'm gonna try to unplug. All right, so this one is just like that red one on the other side, you got to push the red tab out, press the button, and it unplugs. Another little two wire connection. Try to get these clips out here. that one you can see there's should be five of these total there's one two three four and then this other one is kind of buried under this bracket so what I have here is this uh, our air compressor blow gun you can do this with compressed air shoot I mean a leaf blower would be better than nothing Loosen up our first bolt here. Try not to drop your bolt. All right, so the manifold is unbolted. 
So it should pop off a little. It does. But it is still very much attached. So. Okay, so I just unplug this solenoid. Same security tab, pull out the white tab, press in, it unplugs. Took out that eight millimeter bolt. And then pulled this retainment pin off of this stud. So I'm just gonna push the solenoid out of the way. There's two eight millimeter bolts that, is, that are bolting this hard line that's running through the intake manifold. It's, uh, it's the EGR pipe. Uh, it's the only thing I can imagine. I'm gonna unplug it. There's a sensor on that too. Unplug that. That's the same thing. Security tab, pull out, press in. And uh, there's two eight millimeter bolts right here. I'm gonna remove that. That should break that line free and allow us to pull out the manifold a little bit further for some more working space. There's going to be a gasket between these two. It should be a metal gasket. I am going to try to retrieve that so it doesn't fall and we lose it. First, I want to get that other bolt out of here, which may be easiest with a magnet. Go, bolt. Now let's see about this gasket. It's actually on there pretty good. It's got some retainment tabs. So I'm just gonna leave that on there. So the whole point of doing this is as you can see now, that line is moving, so that's letting us pull this manifold off of here a little further. All right, so I'm gonna insert a photo of the PCV line in this video. But it is underneath the manifold here. Now that we have that EGR line disconnected, we can get to it a little easier, but it is all blind. The line is like an accordion, like this, if you feel for that, and it's shaped. It's like kind of in a horseshoe. So you're gonna wanna remove it from the PCV valve first, which is that orange elbow. There is a tab that's on the fitting, and that tab you pull away from the connection, that's the retainment tab, and then you have to push the fitting off of the PCV valve. It is not that fun. There's a lot of sharp things under here, so uh, just take your time. You can hear that tab, but that's me flicking it. So I am going to hold that tab with my middle finger, and I just pushed it off the PCV. And you can hear that come off. And then you actually have to rotate the hose. It'll spin to get to the tab on the manifold side. And that just did that. So here we go. So this is how it's installed in the vehicle. So this is to the manifold. The connection going is going this way, as you've seen in that photo. So this little tab here is kind of in a corner and hidden. So I would remove this one first. You pull this tab away, push it away. And I basically grabbed it, the fitting like this, and used my finger, my ring finger, my middle finger, to push on the tab. It's even difficult to do right here. And then pull, push the fitting away and it unclips. 
and then I rotated the fitting or it rotated in the whole hose to get access to this one and then pushed it off. So again, it's installed in the vehicle like that. And uh, you just gotta to take your time. Uh, if you shove your cell phone down in there, you can take a picture of it and see it. Um, but you can get it by feel. Uh, but yeah, so we have that disconnected. So we're gonna have to reuse these connections. And that's our next step. All right, so we got our uh, heat gun warming up here. What we need to do is we need to pull these fittings out of this hose. So you're just gonna heat this hose end up here uh, and that'll get a little soft and you'll be able to pull these fittings right out. Um, go ahead and remove this sticker if yours has a sticker on it. We don't want that catching on fire. Um, you could also do this with a lighter which sometimes is actually easier and faster. But just going to do this and rotate it around. And uh, let's see if that's enough. So you're just going to grab the fitting, grab the hose, yeah, and it pulls right out. Yeah, you can see I actually left that on there too, a little too long. You don't want to burn your hose if you can help it. Even at that 300, 300 miles, it's already got oil in it. So we're going to do the same thing to the other one. We'll do it for a lot shorter of a time here. It doesn't need much. And that pulls right out. We'll shut our heat gun off. All right, so we're going to install this fitting into the supply JLT rubber hoses. You're going to have to use lubrication in these. We use grease here in the shop, which is like wheel bearing grease, axle grease. On this, um, it's actually a gun cleaning kit is what we use, but you can use, put it on a Q-tip. Um, you know, you just want to get it inside of this hose. And that's going to help us push this fitting and you can leave the o-ring right on it so you're going to push that in you just want to push up the fitting into the hose and i want to try to get this all the way to here so you kind of i bend down and put it kind of between my legs and use my uh my legs as a force and just kind of rotate it and it'll keep going see i'm almost to the second barb now it's going to get more and more difficult as you get past these barbs and our second fitting i'm going to put a little grease on the fitting too to see if that makes this a little easier really like anything else with momentum you want to start pushing the fitting and basically don't stop because once you stop it gets a lot more difficult to push it further on so i'm going to try to push it to here you can grab a rag since the fitting's pretty sharp on your hands or wear a glove All right, just to show you what we got. So you can look at, you know, we have this little gap here, but this is where my O-ring was. That's the first retainment barb, and then that's the second retainment barb, and I'm probably past it 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch. I'm comfortable with that on that ceiling and not obviously blowing off. Um, the same on our other side here. This one's not pushed on as far, but if you look down in there, you can see the barb. I just want that barb to be past the hose. And there's two of them all right we're going to finish prepping our hoses for installation you'll notice that one hose is about an inch longer than another actually it should be an inch one hose is 18 and a half inches the other one is 19 and a half so the longer of the two 
that one's going to run to our intake manifold fitting which is that stationary fitting that doesn't rotate underneath so I'm going to grab a piece of tape here I'm going to write intake on it and then I'm going to write C side C side meaning the OSC on the can um, the C side is going to have the open port the O side is has the filter side the filter needs to go to the PCV that's what collects the oil vapor turns it into liquid form so I'm gonna take my long hose and I'm just gonna label this one I don't really need to label the other one there's only two so what this is going to allow me to do is that when I install these and I have two hoses hanging out of the manifold that are going in the same exact direction, I know which hose is which when later on in our installation. Okay, so we're going to take our intake hose and I'm going to route it around this line here and start to push it underneath the manifold. And then you'll have to go to the other side to grab that line you can kind of use a two-hand method here and find it there it is and then I need to push this on to the intake fitting and you'll hear it click when it engages so that's snapped on so that's our intake and then our PCV I'm going to route through here. You just want to double check that your round wiring harnesses and whatnot, anything that's going to be an obstruction later. I feel pretty clear right now. Now the PCV on the engine block rotates, it pivots. So if you can't get the connection just right, just rotate it until you can get it started. You may have to pull the hose out a little bit. I almost have it there. There you go, it started. And then we want that to snap on too. Grab my other hand here. And that snapped on. All right, so our hoses are routed. So now actually we're going to reassemble a lot of this before we bother mounting the oil separator and connecting the hoses because we have a lot to put back together and we have a lot to double check to make sure we don't leave anything unplugged. So um, let's get started on reassembly. So the first thing I'm going to do on reassembly is I'm just going to refasten the manifold to the cylinder head to get that where it needs to be and then I'll worry about making all the connections. But I want the manifold back in the right place. I don't want to leave it open any longer than I have to. So on this one I'm going to start with the center bolt. You have to put it through the slot here and uh, just get it started in the hole. So now there's dowel pins. This manifold, it's got a plastic dowel here in the center that will align, and that will help you align the manifold. So you want to sit that in there, and that'll lock in, and then you want to start your bolt by hand. And I'm going to make this as tight as I can by hand to just secure it. And then I'm going to put in the rest of the bolts. Really, you want to work from the inside out. So I'm going to do the center bolt here, the two next to it, and then the outer bolts. So just get them all started by hand. And then lastly, our bolt that is underneath the solenoid which we also have our oil separator hose kind of in the way. So I'm going to push that out of the way. 
and uh, I'm gonna attempt not to drop this. Let's see if I can see it. Pushed into there. I just want to push it in a little further. There we go. So the bolt will hang out in there, which is good. Get our socket on it and start it. Okay. Now the torque spec on these intake manifold bolts is only 14 foot-pounds. It's not very much. You can use a torque wrench if you'd like. You could also just use, if you know, depending on your mechanical ability and you know roughly how tight 14 is, you can do that too. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to use this torque wrench. Again, I'm going to tighten the center bolt first. to it. Not least the last outside bolt it's a little hidden all right so our manifold's torqued down So the next step, again, kind of just move around our uh, oil separator lines as we need to, is I want to reconnect this EGR line and get those that bolted back into place. So we're going to take those 8 millimeter bolts we removed earlier, slide the solenoid back out of the way. Make sure your gasket is still in place and I'm going to start these by hand too. Do not want to cross thread any of these bolts. Makes for a real bad day. So, push the line into place until you get your bolt started. So that one started. I want to get my other one started before I tighten anything down. I'm going to drop it into place with my fingers. Same thing on this. You may have noticed earlier in the video using a power ratchet to uh, loosen some stuff. I like to retighten everything with a 
standard ratchet so I can feel if anything's cross-threading before I get into trouble. So I'm going to tighten these up by hand. And those are retightened. And then I can remount this bracket. So, I'm going to plug my connection back in. Remember to re-engage your security locks. This was attached here also. All right, and then you just basically want to restart connecting things again. Um, I'm going to start from the passenger side fender and uh, reconnect from the bottom up. or a breather line here snap that back into place Oops. these here so these need to go down these went underneath this tree secured in this pin and then our white two pin connection, we want to snap back, engage the red security tab, this map sensor connection, that's that, and then I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. Just push my pin back in. We plug those back in. And our harness. Like so. And then down here we had couple pins this was secured on this slotted retainment tab just got to realign that. That snap back in. Got another harness pin here. And then we have our electrical connection. Little EGR guy. Engage this tab. And then this one here. security tab and then this has got a retainment pin that hooks to the manifold that is very difficult to see it's right here like that 
Okay. So we have our bolt. Stud that went into this bracket. Start that by hand. Go ahead and tighten that back up. So then we can put our harness here back on. And I'm going to reattach our coolant line. Snap that into the clip over here. And we're getting there. The only connection I have left this is big guy here so just to show you so I want this intake line to wrap around the outside of the solenoid the PCV I'm gonna snake in between this male fitting and the solenoid there should be plenty of room to make this connection still so I'm gonna slide that on that pushes you push it all the way on and then you press in the big white tab and that locks in so you'll see that's going to secure that line there. All right, now we're ready to take our J and L bracket. It's going to mount here to this exposed insert, nut insert. Use a supplied bolt to start that bracket. Again, to start it by hand, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. I'm just going to run it in by hand. I'm not going to tighten it down yet. All right, now we need to mount our oil separator to our bracket. So you're going to line up the logos. And you're going to use the supplied screws. Same thing, start these by hand. Start them both. So I'm going to go and tighten those down. All right, now we need to make our connection. So again, we knew this was our intake side. This is going to the manifold, the clean side. I have C side written on it, C as in OSC. So I know this hose needs to go here. Again, this is routed on the side of this EGR solenoid uh, in between these two other lines. So I'm just gonna take that same grease we used earlier, just put a little bit in there and push this onto the oil separator fitting. Push that all the way up. And then our other line, I'm gonna connect to the O side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this can exactly where we want it, and I'm gonna tighten up that 10 millimeter bolt. All right, so we're gonna just kind of square this up and tighten this bolt down doesn't need to be crazy tight it's still in the plastic and then we can take our tape off double check over all your connections make sure all your electrical connections are plugged in if you left one unplugged, I can assure you, you will have a check engine light when you go to start the vehicle. You can read that code and that may point you in the right direction of which one that you left unplugged. But just take your time, check everything twice, three times before you start the vehicle. Thanks for watching.